you uh, very much, Minister, dear colleagues. So I'm uh, just very glad to be here in Munich in front of uh, the Masters of Innovation. Uh, and I'm glad also because it gives me an opportunity to meet my friend Jean-Pierre Tarrant. We have been during 15 years colleagues at Onera, and I think that uh, it was a good old times where I was a researcher first, but also maybe even more important that I was young. Um, but uh, today I, uh, I have to speak uh, about challenges after the Council at Ministerial level visa, which took place in Naples last November. I must say that the challenge was first to have a successful council at ministerial level. And uh, it's always better to have the challenge to implement a success than uh, the challenge to recover after a failure. Uh, and uh, if I say that, it's because uh, 10 years ago when I became director general, the first challenge was to recover from the failure of Ariane Fabicier. So I know what does it mean. Uh, so the uh, council at ministerial level uh, of ISA has been a success, a great success. And I think that for three reasons. The first one is because uh, governments are more and more aware that uh, investing in space, it's investing in competitiveness and growth. Space is not a, an expense. Space is an investment to stimulate economy and jobs in Europe. And if I say that, it's because, uh, as you know, one of the success of the Council at, at ministerial level was to have the UK contributing uh, uh, to ESA with 25% uh, more money, which was a challenge. Uh, but even more interesting was the fact that uh, the one was uh, announced that the decision of the UK government was not the minister in charge of space but Monsieur George Osborne, the Minister of Finance. And when the Minister of Finance is glad to spend money, I think that it's a good sign. Uh, so that, this was the first reason. The second reason is because the member states trust ESA. Trust ESA as being a very good structure to invest in space and in economy. And the third reason is certainly because space industry is not delocalized in Europe. There is no need for re-industrialization. Re-industrialization is a word which is uh, uh, a word in Europe. I think that no need for re-industrialization for space industry. The jobs are in Europe. So when you invest in space, you invest in jobs which are located in Europe. So this is certainly the three main reasons for uh, for. Uh, uh, the council at ministerial level being a success. So now we have just to deliver and to fulfill the expectations of the member states, meaning delivering knowledge, delivering innovation, delivering services in order to create value and jobs in the European industrial sector. So the challenges are four. First, to deliver successfully the coming missions of ESA. And we have more and more missions to deliver. The second challenge is to implement the decisions taken at the Council at ministerial level as quickly as possible, even though within the budget constraints of member states. The third challenge is to anticipate the rapid evolution of the world space sector, in particular the commercial sector. And since the Council at ministerial level, there was already a lot of evolutions in the telecommunication sector and also in the launch service sector. And the fourth uh, challenge is to make the complexity of Europe an opportunity rather than a deficit of efficiency. So I shall come back on these four challenges. So the first one is to deliver successfully the coming missions of ESA. ESA is synonym of success. And I must say that if I take just the beginning of the year, on the 21st of March, we have disclosed the uh, first data of Planck. And we have been the first one to disclose these uh, fantastic data, giving the uh, uh, fossil light after the Big Bang. This is a fantastic result, 
based on the technology breakthrough because it came from the ability to cool down detectors at 0.1 degree Kelvin. In March also, we had the first localization based on four Galileo satellites. And this localization has demonstrated that Galileo is on its way to a success because the localization which has been done based on four satellites, obviously we don't have the visibility of four satellites every day, but when we have four satellites in visibility, I think that the localization is uh, world class. In April, Mr. Minister, we were together in uh, Oberfaffenhofen to celebrate the 1,000 job created by the Business Incubation Center that we have developed in Oberfaffenhofen in partnership with DLR, with the Bavaria, and uh, other investors, including banks. And as I said in all my speeches, when a bank is investing somewhere, it's good news because they are the ones who are taking the less risk in the world. Uh, and uh, in Le Bourget, it was 10 days ago, we have uh, signed with uh, uh, Monsieur Legal the eighth business incubation center, the one of the south of France, uh, the uh, Aerospace Valley in Toulouse, and uh, that is uh, the, the eighth business incubation center, and I shall sign the ninth one in September in Barcelona. Just to say that Bavaria has been at the forefront of a series of business incubation centers which are very really successful. On the 7th of May, we, have the, we had the second launch of Vega, full success in spite of the complexity of the uh, mission. And Vega was bringing Probave, uh, that uh, Jan Werner has mentioned. And Probave is a, a technological satellite, but with operational services, vegetation, uh, to look at the land cover and also the payload of DLR for uh, tracking the, uh, the planes over the Atlantic Ocean. On the 5th of June, we had the launch of ATV-4, Albert Einstein, and followed on the 15th of June by the docking to the space station. And I must say it was a fantastic docking, a docking to the Russian part, uh, meaning that it's a partnership with our uh, Russian uh, colleagues. Uh, but it was a fantastic docking because it was a capture without contact. And that uh, even according to uh, our Russian colleagues, to have a capture without contact shows the accuracy of the uh, rendezvous and docking of the ATV. On the 25th of July, we shall launch Alphasat, the biggest telecommunication satellite ever developed in Europe. It's a lot of partnership on the Alphasat. First, it's a partnership between ISA and CNES to develop the platform Alphabus. It's also a partnership between Thales Alenia and Astrium, which is not as usual, uh, but uh, it's good to have uh, the partnership between Thales and Astrium, and it's a partnership between ISA and Inmarsat, the uh, operator, and it's a real public-private partnership, meaning that the member states of ISA, they are taking the risk to develop a new technology, and the operator is putting money, taking the risk to use this new technology to open a new market, and that will be launched on the 25th of July. And just to say that there is a lot of innovation on board the Alphasat, including the laser terminal, which, has, which is provided by DLR, made by TSAT here in Germany. And if the laser terminal is qualified in geostationary orbit, I think that uh, we have a chance to drive the world standard. In October, we shall have the launch of Gaia. And before the end of the year, we shall have the launch of Swarm, the Earth Explorer number four and also of the next Galileo satellites. So, just to say that uh, we are delivering a lot of missions. I know that would because I am superstitious, but so far, so good. Because no mission is routine. Each launch, each satellite is a challenge. Because it's always risky. I know all the reasons not to launch Ariane, but we launch it. Because we are managing the risks. And to manage the risks, we have to be the best expert of the world, meaning that the expertise is with the European industry. So that is the missions of today. But unfortunately, the missions of today are the innovation of yesterday, meaning that we have to innovate today to make the missions of tomorrow. And uh, this is what we have to do. And this is the second challenge, which is to implement the decision of the Council at ministerial level. 
I shall not go through all the programs which have been decided. I think that you all know uh, the programs which have been decided. But just to say that we are on track. We are on track. Speaking of Ariane, we have defined the commonalities between Ariane 5 me and Ariane 6 two months in advance. We, uh, we went to the IPC last week, meaning that we shall be able to sign the industrial contract on Ariane 5 me now. On IM6, we shall select the configuration this week to start the industrial consultation now. On uh, NEOSAT telecommunications, we are expecting the industrial proposal on the 14th of July. Electra is also on its way. Uh, we are working on a new public-private partnership based on Alphabus with Heracles. So all that is ongoing uh, and the implementation of uh, the, um, uh, the council at ministerial level, I would say, is on track. The third challenge is to anticipate the evolution of the world. Yes, we have to implement the decisions taken, but we have already to plan the next decisions. Because the world is moving, and is moving very fast. The telecommunication world today is totally different from what it was one year ago. There is more and more uh, satellites which are based on electric propulsion. So we are implementing that on Neosat, we are implementing that on Electra, and as I said, hopefully also on Alphabus. But we have to go quick, because the market is already there. On loan services, Falcon 9 is uh, demonstrating uh, now on a regular basis that it works. Uh, Antares has flown already uh, once. Proton is, uh, uh, has made a, a series of successful flights. Sea Launch has signed recently a new contract. All that is uh, based on uh, is changing the, the, the picture of launch services. And uh, including uh, because European customers have signed contracts with these uh, launchers. So we have to go quick. Uh, but going quick is not enough. Because whatever, even if we are the quickest of the world, it takes always years to develop a new launcher. And during these years, there, there can be two generations of satellites. And this is the reason why the key word in anticipating uh, the, uh, the challenge of tomorrow is flexibility. We have to keep the flexibility out of our spacecraft. And this is where the innovation is important. Because the innovation is there to try and keep the flexibility. Because we are moving in a quickly changing world, and if we are setting products which, when they are there, are already out of date, I think that we are making a big mistake. So innovation is on the flexibility. And flexibility uh, means uh, in technology, in industrial process, in services. So we have to innovate on several aspects, not only on technology. So ESA must be involved in all these aspects of innovation. So the last challenge is to make the complexity of Europe an opportunity, rather than a lack of efficiency. Europe is complex, and as I say in all my speeches, don't try to make Europe simple, it's a loss of time. Uh, I think that uh, we have to accept the complexity of uh, Europe. We have, there are a lot of actors in Europe. 20 member states at ESA, uh, 28 at the, in the European Union. So meaning that it's a number of governments, as I was saying this morning to the minister, with 20 member states, I have a change of government every three months. So I think that uh, we, have to, uh, we, have, we have to adapt to that. And the member states, they are using national programs, ESA programs, EU programs to implement their, uh, their space policy. But there is also a lot of different partners, industry operators, investors in Europe. So we have to work with that. And unfortunately, 
because Europe is complex, the consensus of decision is always much lower than I would like. But, but I would not like to, uh, to say that the complexity is only a disadvantage. We have to use that, that complexity. And I would like to give you three advantages of this complexity. First, yes, it is slow to take a decision, but when a decision is taken, this is the most solid decision that you can dream of. Meaning that ESA is the most reliable partner of the world. Because at ESA, it's difficult to take a decision, but it's even more difficult to stop a program when it is decided. So it, it makes ESA the most reliable partner of the world. And, and our international partners, they know that. They know that. Why NASA has put ESA on the critical path of a crew transportation system with the MPCVSM? It's because they trust in our uh, reliability and in our capacity. Why could I change, move from a NASA partnership to a Raskosmos partnership on ExoMars? It's because uh, we, we are reliable. And uh, I would like just to say that we are so reliable that uh, David Williams from Avanti, the British operator, has made the best compliment that he could have done with ESA. He, he was saying in public that by using the name of ESA, he can raise money on the stock market. That is a demonstration of the reliability of who we are. That is number one. The second advantage is that we have a multi-partnership, meaning that we can build a lot of leverage. And leverage is an instrument of growth, meaning that uh, by using this leverage, we can organize growth and competitiveness. And the third is that in Europe, we have a unique experience of a mix of cooperation and competition. Uh, Jan Werner was saying that uh, when you are at ISA, you cannot forget the national pride. This is true, meaning that we have a fantastic experience of this mix of cooperation and competition. There is always uh, the willingness among our member states to cooperate, but there is also always the competition among the member states, meaning that we are the master of that. And the world is made of a mix of cooperation and competition. So we, we have to use this experience to make sure that we can have a, a significant role on the world scene. It's coming from connecting different expertise. Innovation is not coming in your office when you are isolated. It's when you are able to connect different expertise that you can get innovation. And the expertise is with the people. The expertise is not in the books. The expertise is with you. And this is the reason why organizing this type of workshop is very interesting, because this workshop is to connect people. And by connecting people, you have a chance to raise innovation. Thank you very much.